how would you improve national security and safety as of today? You know, it's a great question because there's several layers to this. There is the, you have to stop the bleeding at the border and then you have to fix the legal and illegal immigration. Uh, and you have to then separate the illegal immigrants of the last couple of years who came predominantly from nations that support terror versus all of the illegal immigrants who come from nations that are allies and that have been friends to the United States and that there is not a problem. Uh, you have to make that distinction. All illegal immigrants are not in the same category and in terms of solving the problem and addressing the problem. And until America fixes our legal immigration process, illegal immigration will continue to be encouraged. So we have to fix the legal immigration, the illegal immigration of the past, illegal immigrants that are already here, that are already going to our schools, that are friends with your children, uh, and that they're playing on the same soccer teams together and having them over for birthday parties. We have to solve that differently than we solved the illegal immigrants that were coming from nations that intend to do us harm over the last couple of years. And then, of course, obviously sealing the border so that this doesn't continue happening. Uh, even the right solutions for legal and Ill illegal immigrants cannot be properly executed without stopping the bleeding at the border. It must stop. And it's, it's for our safety now with all of the over 100,000 fentanyl deaths a year, uh, killing Americans far more than COVID and some of the things that we were willing to shut down our whole economy and stop the wheels of commerce for. Uh, and we have a much greater crisis that we're just turning a blind eye to right now. Uh, but that's just the immediate. The greater long term is the fear factor. The fear factor is what happened on 9-11 when they strike fear into the hearts of every single American. And the truth is we had have had millions come across, uh, many of which have had nefarious intentions at some point to be activated and to be mobilized by their uh, cells that are in a higher hierarchy than they are. And, and, and so we know that that is an imminent threat. And the way they do it is not through fentanyl and drugs. It is in the most casual way of everyday life so as to strike at the heart, strike with the greatest amount of fear to paralyze the American people. And there are so many of them now that the attacks will be far more coordinated than they ever were on 9-11. It won't just be happening in New York City or in one set of buildings or in one city block. With this amount of coordination and staff already in the United States that they have, they are able to carry out highly coordinated, simultaneous attacks so that the United States doesn't know where it's going to come from next. Americans will be boarded up in their homes. And, and we think it can't happen here. But we've already laid the groundwork for it to happen here. So that's one aspect to national security and how I will uh, keep Americans safe immediately. But that's only one part because we still have the ones who are here. Uh, we still have mass shootings. The school shootings and mass shootings at like sporting events and at uh, music festivals and at retail outlets and shopping malls and schools. This is the spark and the catalyst for so much of the rhetoric and, uh, and the, the heated rhetoric between uh, over guns. And, but how I will keep Americans safe from these mass shootings. My solution is not to go after guns, just like I'm not going to go after automobiles. There are far more automobiles, uh, or far more guns in the, in the United States than automobiles by a multiple. And so, but, on, but more people are killed with vehicles every year, multiples, even though there are a few of them. So on a per capita or on a percentage basis, automobiles are one of the most deadly things in America. And no one is calling for us to stop the automobile. Uh, some would argue that that's the net-net the of the electric car movement, 
uh, because they have the kill switches and so forth uh, mandatory as of 2026. So they will be able to, to, to stop that as well uh, as they keep taking more freedom uh, to control us more. But that's what I will be stopping. Uh, I will protect you, your family, and this nation because, and how I do that, especially from the mass shootings, is without exception, every single one of our mass shooters have been on certain uh, medication. And we know what these mind altering drugs are. Most often they've been prescribed to them. Uh, they weren't high on something else, they were taking medicinal uh, medication. And it is mind altering and puts them in states that you and I cannot imagine. You combine that with the ideology that is targeting our youth today. And that is what activates and mobilizes them. Uh, that is up to parents to guard their children on the ideology. I don't want it to be a purveyor in society and culture, but parents are the first line of defense to protect the minds and hearts of their children. And so while they're doing their job, I will be doing mine as president to make sure that we have the list of every single person that has been issued these mind-altering drugs in the United States. Most of them have been on FBI watch lists as well. The problem is they're not getting watched. And so part of my mandates will be realigning the, the uh, whatever federal Bureau, I end up assigning this task to, uh, to watching what they're supposed to be watching. Watch the watch list. Someone needs to keep eyes on them. And when they are crossing uh, uh, barriers and thresholds that are leading to the wrong thing, we know what the online activity is. We know the threats that are being made. And if we, we have to take preemptive action to get them mental help. Uh, the problem is we did away with uh, mental, uh, long-term mental health institutions years ago, several decades ago. Uh, and when we took away the mental health institutions in the late 80s, uh, we, it put them on the street. And then they ended up in prison. And so literally 33% of the, our current inmates probably belong in a mental health institution to get the help they need, as opposed to in, the, in, in a caged environment where there is no help, there is no solution long-term. And, and so we must fix that. That is the greatest safety that I can do uh, and that we can do as, the, as Americans to protect our children in schools, to protect concert goers and sports fans, and for you to just be able to go out on the weekends with your family and go shopping and get what you need, buy Christmas supplies and, and enjoy Thanksgiving and be able to buy school supplies without fear of some whack job coming in and blowing the place up. And so these are the immediate steps that I would take to keep America safe. These are real steps. Uh, these are not partisan steps. These are not talking points from any political party. This is common sense American ideas of how do we stop the mass shootings and, uh, and then how do we protect our border? These are different types of assaults. These are different types of threats. And the president of the United States better be able to handle all of them. And I haven't even started to talk about how I handle your cyber cybersecurity. Your phones are compromised. Your laptops are compromised. Your TVs are compromised. Your smart devices are compromised. And it's only going to get exponentially worse with artificial intelligence. And we have political leaders and presidential candidates who can't even say the word and couldn't give you a definition of it if they tried. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the top three greatest issues of our day and of our time is national security. And the family and the breakdown of the family is one of the greatest contributing factors to the threat of our safety th than anything else. But the great news is it's also the answer. The stronger the family unit is, the less teenager is going to need to have be on some kind of mental health, mind altering drug the less they're gonna need some antidepressant, the less which causes more people to commit suicide than if they almost even weren't on it. It's, it's such a difficult situation to be in. But a strong family alleviates most of that. Uh, doing what's right, uh, having a wholesome family, those are the kind of things that uh, teaching your children values and honor and respect and decency, these are the, that's the substance 
of what creates a valuable citizen, a contributing member of society that is safe, that is uh, helps protect the vulnerable and the weak and the poor. Uh, and that is a healthy, that's a healthy nation. And so those are those are just a few highlights on how I would keep America safe.